Hey everyone, my name is Atan and this is my final project on Apache Avro. So, what is Avro and why do we really need it? From the Apache Avro's website, it says that it's a data serialization, deserialization system. What does it really mean, data serialization, deserialization, and what's the importance? So say you have a piece of code which is running what that piece of code does is basically creates a bunch of data structures in memory. Now say you have another system which is running some other set of code and it needs the data structures that the first system created for second system. The easiest way to share this data is either using disk and databases have been doing that for some time or using network. When you say www.google.com you're basically making a request over the network to get some data. So to write or read this data over the network or to the disk, we need a serialization, deserialization system. Uh, what, has, what has been happening these days is evolution of SOA-based systems. So there are no more monolithic systems. Every big system has been broken down into smaller systems and each of these system is written in a language which suits that system the most. For example, if I have to write an analytics system with Hadoop, I'll probably write it in Java. Whereas if I have to develop a UI, I'll probably go with Python Django. So in order to communicate data between these two systems, I need a framework which is agnostic of language, which really is not bound by Java or Python. It's able, every system is able to understand the system and that's what Avro tries to address. XML has been doing this for some time, but the problem with XML is it's way too verbose. JSON tries to do it, but JSON is way too loose. It does not, it's not bound to a schema. So the evolution of whole uh, data serialization, deserialization system started with protocol buffers from Google. Facebook came out with Thrift and Apache Avro has been a brainchild of duck cutting, the guy who wrote Hadoop. Besides being a serialization deserialization system, other good bits of Avro are the RPC, the tracing bit, and how it can be used as an input and output format for Hadoop. So let's go with the first use case the serialization, deserialization bit of Avro. What's good about Avro is it has a very simple schema. So basically, if you know JSON, you know 70% of how to write a object with Avro schema. Uh, another good bit is every time you serialize or deserialize, that's every time you're reading or writing data, the schema for that data is present what what it helps is that when you try to read an object from a file which was written by Avro, you don't need to know the schema up front because the schema has been written into that file. You can easily read that file. Similarly, when you're trying to write a file, if you try to write an object which does not adhere to a schema, the writing bit will probably give you an exception talk saying about it. Uh, I'll go ahead and show the same. So what this lets you do is you can read and write the objects both using with and without the code generation. Let me go show you something. So basically this is how a Avro schema file looks like. You basically have a namespace which is similar to a package in Java. Then you define what kind of record, what's the type. So there's like uh, this protocol, this record, and this enum. It's a bunch of data types that Avro supports. Then you say, what's the name of my class? So it's similar to having a Java class. So this tweet Avro schema is basically equal to writing edu.howard.twitter.schema.tweet.java. Then you basically highlight the fields of this object. In my scenario, it's a simple tweet. So you have a tweet ID, a user associated with this tweet, and then what's the text associated with this tweet. You should know that there's a type associated with each of them. There are other 
goodies that you get with it you can make it nullable non-nullable you can add basic validation but I'm, I'm not gonna cover this now based on this schema file you can read and write objects you don't need anything besides this but another goodness that comes on top of this is that you can gen you can make this schema file generate code for you so let me show you so if you look at this tweet.java it has been auto generated by Avro when I did MVN clean package it generated this class so basically my tweet.java is uh, is a representation of my tweet.avro schema file it has all if you look at it it has all the setters and getters available for what the fields were available in my tweet avro schema I can go ahead and create a tweet object using any of these methods I can say because I'm using code generation so I have tweet.java already available with me so I can say tweet tweet equal to new tweet call all the setters and give it back I can use the readers and writers to serialize and deserialize the tweet similarly if I want to do this on Python I can do the same Avro does not support code generation for Python but what it does let you do is it lets you read the schema and then write all the data according to the schema the thing to note is how the dictionary that we're writing is has the same keys as was the keys for the fields in tweet.avro schema so if you happen to mess up any of these keys if you say rather than writing user if you say username while writing this file avro is gonna give you an exception that it wasn't able to find this object that that the object does not adhere to the schema so another thing to notice is if you run this guy say if I go ahead and run this guy it will generate a file called tweet.avro this is how it looks like let me open the tweet.avro file sorry about that okay so if you go to terminal and if you do cat tweet.avro it's basically a binary file also if you look at this this thing has the schema on top so as I said every time you read or write using avro it prints out it, it keeps the schema with the da data so that way you don't have to worry about you know whether my data adheres to a schema or not besides serialization deserialization you can use Avro for basic RPC as well so as I said systems have become smaller these days so you have say two systems basically say a UI which is tweeting and you have an analytics system which is basically reading these tweets now if you want to do a communication between these systems you can do a basic RPC you can define that you know I'm using a Twitter service which is similar to a Java interface with a method called send tweet and then it basically takes a tweet record an object of type called tweet record as an input and then works on it and then the tweet record object has a tweet ID it has a text and it has a username so basically if I do MVN clean package on my project I will get something like this so the send error the tweet record and the Twitter service all these got created because I had them mentioned in my AVDL file so if you look at it it has an uh, it has a method called send tweet of type void which we defined in the AVDL file now what I can do is I can go ahead and implement this interface so basically all I'm doing is I'm creating a server over here 
an HTTP server and every time somebody invokes send tweet method on the server I just go ahead and do a sysout now if you look at my Python bit all I'm doing over here is yeah I'm doing I'm creating a client over here and I'm just doing an HTTP RPC call on my Twitter search same way I'm creating a tweet over here and then I'm saying that invoke the send tweet method and do it over RPC so if I go ahead and run my code over here so this thing is gonna start the server now if I go ahead and do Avro and if I go to my source main Python and if I do Python So if you look at this, this guy sent a request and it got executed on the server. So basically this way you're able to share data. If you look at it, it is again strongly typed. If you mess up the username or text, any of these keys, or if you add an extra key, it's going to complain that it was not able to understand it. So this will give you a basic idea why is having a type a good thing and why Avro is useful when you have a typed object and how you can interact with systems in two different languages. Mind you, the client is in Python whereas the server is in Java. This basically demonstrates the same. It says that I created a server, then I have the void send tweet method implemented, then I created a Python based client and invoked it. Besides this, I can use Avro for MapReduce as well. What, I'm, what I've done is basically I've created a bunch of tweets and I'm trying to figure out whether a given person likes his phone or hates his phone for a given brand. So basically I'm using generate tweets to generate a million tweets and I'm saying pick randomly from one phone and one emotion and then append them as a hashtag. And in my phone sentiment analyzer, if you look at the mapper, the mapper says that the input is tweet. And if you look at it, the examples that we have done, we used to say that, you know, it's a string sequence. So it was always hard to figure out that what can this object have. So for example, in my case, I'm saying, okay, it's an object of type tweet. So it becomes easier for me to figure out okay get the hashtags out of that tweet or get the user ID so this basically gives an idea how having a type associated with an object makes it easier to work with so similarly with the reducer all in, it, it, the example is very similar to word count it's basically reading a bunch of tweets trying to it's creating a key on hashtags and then putting one against each of them once it finds similar pair of hashtags it adds adds them up and eventually displays you how many hashtags is found that had the same value. The only other different bit is the average job set input schema where I'm able to set that the schema of my input is a tweet is of the same type as tweet. So basically it just gives you an idea that with Avro you can have typed objects with MapReduce why Avro? It's easier to learn, similar to JSON. There's a lot of tooling available. Integration with Maven is really awesome and it's pretty scalable because it's used in Hadoop, so it has to be scalable. Other alternatives are Thrift and Protocol Buffers. What I did not cover over here was how to write schema files, how you can do tracing like Zipkin, and what other languages besides Python and Java support it. These are the references that I used, and thanks a lot.